Hello and welcome to the C++11 Beginner Tutorials by Gamer2Creator. I'm Chris and I'll be your instructor. So what is C++? Well, as you can see from the Wikipedia article, it is a statically typed, freeform, multi-paradigm, compiled, general purpose programming language. And that's a lot of information in one sentence. I'll break it down for you. Statically typed means you must clear the type of your variables at compile time. Everything, every type in C++ is known at compile time. Reform, you can have your spaces, tabs, and new lines pretty much in any way you want. You could put it on all one line if you wanted to, uh, but most people separate it out on the different lines and try to keep some kind of uh, good format for spacing and tabs. We'll get into that later. Multi-paradigm. C++11 allows you to do procedural, object-oriented, and functional programming. More on that later. Compiled. In order to run a C++ application, you must compile it first. Your, every time you make a change to your code and you want to see that app the new app run, you must compile it. This allows it to be ran immediately and fast. It is compiled into, on Windows, an EXE or a DLL or a lib. EXEs are run. Libs are used to, uh, to add code from a different library into your code. And DLLs are dynamic link libraries and they allow you to share libraries across applications and Windows makes heavy use of DLLs and on Linux there's dot SUO I believe that are the equivalent to DLLs and general purpose you can do pretty much anything you want with C++ you can make games graphical user interfaces, any pre pretty much any kind of app you want you can do a lot with it and it's good at pretty much anything it's great at some things and it's good at most things and that's the basic rundown of what C++ is um, C++ was created by Bajorn Shostrup he wanted to add object oriented programming to C and he was successful in that. Just recently in C++11, which was released in 2011, they updated the language significantly and made it much easier to learn, to use, and to write code that isn't full of bugs and to help you be more efficient. And they did an excellent job with C++11. Before C++11, the last update that added features was in 1998. That's a long time ago. And since then there was only one bug fix update that didn't add any features. So for all that time, languages like C Sharp and Java have been gaining ground. Um, and getting features added and bugs fixed and maintained and and even through all of this C++ has survived and is in heavy use everything depends on C++ in one way or another in C because even C Sharp and Java at some point within their environments and managed areas Something is written in C or C++ because of the speed and power that it affords you. So this speaks to how good of a language it is for it to be able to survive without significant updates for that long. But everything has changed now. C++11, major update, great update, even Microsoft is singing its praises. and 
they have a competing language with it. But they know even their language depends on C++. Herb Sutter said that every um, group in Microsoft has C++ as a dependency somewhere down in the line. So with that, let's get started. Well, what we're going to do in this video series is use Visual Studio Express 2012. This is a free IDE, which means it's an integrated development environment. It includes everything you need to make C++ applications on Windows. It supports some maybe most of the new C++ 11 stuff. Right now, at the time of this recording, no compiler has implemented all of C++ 11. They are all playing catch up still. So there will be a few things that I can't show you yet working, but I can still write it out and give you a little example or two. Uh, but most of the important stuff is in Visual Studio 2012. So let's get the IDE installed. All right. First, we're going to do a Google search for Visual Studio. And then we go to download. Now, here's all the the versions of Visual Studio. You have Ultimate, Premium, Professional. These are all pay for versions. You scroll down, you'll see Visual Studio Express. The Express versions are free. And to make desktop type applications, even if you're on Windows 8, but you want to make desktop type applications, you need to get this version. Visual Studio Express 2012 for Windows Desktop. Now I would recommend just downloading this. It's a little exe that will automatically download the files and install, excuse me, for you. But if you want, you can download an ISO and then burn it or mount it to a virtual drive. It's up to you. But from here, you just click that and then run this, and then everything is automated and very simple from there. Once you run it, I'm going to, from now on, consider you you have it installed. So after we run it, and it takes a while for some reason, there we go. And some people I've heard say that this Visual Studio is written in C Sharp, so that's why it's sort of slow. Don't quote me on that. Alright, so we have Visual Studio open, and this is what you should see the first time you run it. It's a start page, you can make a new project, open a new project, I mean open an old project. Um, and then here will be some recent projects that you've opened. Um, and it's important to note that there's a lot of documentation. Whenever you install Visual Studio, I think it asks you if you want to download the documentation. You should download the Visual Studio C++ documentation. You don't have to because the equivalent is on msdn.com and you can surf it online. But I like to have the docs with me just in case. And the help viewer is quite nice. So you can go to view help. And then it took me here because I have it set to online. Uh, set help preference. There. You can switch that to the help viewer. A window should pop up. There we go. I'll go ahead and show you this real quick. And this is where you would add something. Like uh, I want to add Visual C++. There we go. I'll just leave these 
added. Then you can add some other stuff if you want. And then you just click update and then it'll go about downloading, installing it, and adding it. And we'll come back to that later. Alright, so I'm going to end this video here. And then uh, I'm going to show you how to set up Visual Studio in the next video. And I'm also going to give you guys a settings file that will make your code look very pretty and use a lot of different colors for the syntax highlighting and to set up some basic stuff. So, see you then. Okay.